Uh, a very good evening to all. Uh, my name is June. First of all, I would like to thank UNESCO Bangkok and Lao PDR for inviting me to this HIA workshop. I will be presenting a HIA case study of a linear development that is a railway project in Malaysia. Okay, uh, just a quick run. Uh, uh, I'll run through what is HIA. Uh, what and why, uh, uh, in, in a simple language. Okay, HIA is a study to it's a study process to evaluate the change alteration that will have on the attributes of the cultural significance resulted by a development such as building, infrastructures, event, and to recommend an overall approach to reduce and minimize the severity of the impact. Uh, objective is to sustain and protect the OUV of a world heritage properties and the cultural significance of a cultural heritage resources. Okay, next slide I have, um, what is HIA again? True, uh, view through a picture. Um, I love Thailand, I love Indochina. Uh, today I'm sharing a picture uh, from Bangkok. Uh, okay, look at uh, this picture here. A picture speaks a, a thousand words. An example of a heritage impact where the key view is being obstructed by the jetty. Uh, so this is a simple understanding what is heritage. Huh? Uh, something is obstructing huh? the key view. Uh, this is just one example of a heritage impact, huh? one of the example, which is a visual impact. And then I have the next picture. <clears throat> this is a beautiful building here. Unfortunately, I do not know the name. <laughs> Maybe Montera can help me. Uh, okay, the key view is not obstructed, wonderful. Uh, however, you can look at the picture, there are trees, huh? left and right. So the secondary key view will also be obstructed. So this is the uh, example. What is HIA? Eh? Uh, in simple uh, uh, illustration, uh, true picture. Okay, uh, on linear project, uh, which the subject I'll be talking about today, uh, and I will concentrate in the railway. Why is heritage impact assessment important in linear development projects? In every building of, in every building, in the building of every nation known to history, transportation and service infrastructure project usually take the lead in order to stimulate economic growth. However, we see many developments such as railway, new roads, elevated highways, bridges, river expansion, maintenance facilities, and other systems. In the past decade, and even today, uh, uh, constructed in the past decade until today, there's no consideration for the impact brought to the heritage resources despite increasing effort being placed on the awareness. This is a picture taken in Kuala Lumpur as you come into Kuala Lumpur. This is a new MRT2 uh, 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 pier and wider. Although there's no heritage uh, uh, sites around, but this is how uh, during construction, uh, uh, the, the scene, the view, the setting, how it looks like. And then uh, lessons learned in the past. This is also happening in Malaysia. Um, MRT2 was the first uh, 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 mass uh, rapid uh, railway system in Malaysia that was almost 10 years ago. And after that incident, uh, uh, the, the HIA uh, assess uh, heritage impact assessment became a compulsory document ever since that. So anyway, the first picture above, you see uh, demolition of buildings under threat. Uh, bottom picture on the left is the sentiment of the, the community. People are protesting, do not want the railway to be there because they are demolishing blocks and blocks of old shop houses in Chinatown, Kuala Lumpur. And then uh, this is another, the, the picture on the right. Um, this is a monorail project where the, the monorail uh, it was constructed just right in front of the, <laughs> of the windowway of the old uh, shop house, uh, which is very sad. So this is the past example uh, of a heritage impact, lessons learned. Okay, uh, who? Who can, can carry, carry, carry out a heritage impact assessment? It has to be qualified practitioners, uh, such as, the list is very long, I'm just gonna read quickly, just a few lists, a, a, few, uh, a, a few of this here. Uh, in general, it's a teamwork that consists of other professionals and other people. Uh, like heritage practitioner, environmental specialists, archeologists, socialists, uh, historians, architects, landscape architects, traffic engineer, and all kinds of engineers, geologists, botanists, planners, and many others. 
Okay, uh, just a quick overview on, uh, in, about uh, HIA and also the environment protection in Malaysia. Uh, like I said just now, HIA has been in practice in Malaysia for linear projects since almost a decade ago uh, by adopting the HIA guideline from Jabatan Warisan, which is the National Heritage Department, and also ECOMOS 2011 guidance. Uh, so far, the heritage impact assessment that has been carried out in Malaysia, such as MRT, LRT, the ECRL, High Speed Rail, BRT in Johor, ART in Sarawak, and many other more. Um, other uh, assessments like traffic, uh, traffic impact assessment, social impact assessment are also mandatory studies for the development uh, in, for any development in Malaysia today besides the HIA. The first ever linear HIA conducted in the country was the MRT2, which is the SSP Putrajaya line in chaos spanning the distance of 52.2 kilometers. The picture on the right, that is the, that is the alignment uh, that uh, we have studied. And however, the protection of the environment in Malaysia has started way back in the 1970s. So we are talking about 50 years of protecting the environment in Malaysia. And HIA is almost one decade. Uh, for those who are not aware, uh, uh, now I hope everybody knows that Malaysia is also uh, carrying out HIA, SIA, Social Impact Assessment, TIA, uh, uh, this kind of uh, impact assessment studies for all development projects. And then in Malaysia, we have a set of law that uh, governs the, the, the requirement uh, of the HIA uh, practice. Uh, for example, those uh, the sets of laws, I'm highlighting those in red. Uh, though, uh, that is the Department of National Heritage and also Plan Malaysia and also the Land Public Transport Agency in Malaysia. So the, for, for linear projects, highways, uh, railways, um, the, the HIA requirement it will be, it is a requirement uh, by, by the Land Public Transport Agency, yeah? the Ministry of Transport. Yeah? Uh, they, they would require that. And also, and, but however, the first, the people, the, the department that evaluates the HIA, that approves the HIA is the Department of Natural Heritage. And also Plan Malaysia, they also uh, have comment on that because they are in planning department uh, for, for the country. Um, so this is a background about Malaysia. Okay, I'm gonna go into my case study. Um, uh, today, uh, which is the, the, the key the, the, the key topic of my, my, my presentation. Okay, the project I'm going to share today is the high speed rail project from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore. They call it the H my HSR. My means Malaysia, but I'm, I'm typing here as HSR alignment. Um, this study was done, was carried out in, in 2017, uh, completed in 2018. It will be passing through four states in Peninsula Malaysia and the total distance of 350 kilometers and it will have eight stations, uh, seven in Malaysia and one in Singapore. So our studies will cover from Kuala Lumpur to Johor Bahru. You can see the four states is Langor, Negeri Sembilan, Malacca, Johor. So it will end at Johor Bahru and then, but it, it will still go into Singapore, but it, the, the HIA will be studied by the Singapore counterpart. So this is my case study today. Okay, the scope, uh, the, the, just, a over, just an overview of the scoping. Uh, we start off with the alignment heritage uh, uh, screener uh, for those uh, listed heritage sites, and then we identify potential heritage sites, those unlisted heritage sites. So the, 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 the benefit of this HIA tool um, is important because it also gave the opportunity for the study to identify those uh, potential sites that are unknown, not listed. Eh? And then after that, we conduct a historical research, especially, uh, for example, those identified uh, potential heritage sites, you need to do historical uh, research. And then after that, you need to evaluate the heritage value. Uh, uh, we use the ICOMOS guide and also JWN. And then after that, you access the magnitude of the impact. And then you propose a mitigation. And bear in mind that HIA study, HIA report is not a one-time study. It's, it's a continuous, uh, depending on, on the development, the stages, uh, where it goes. Uh, it, it, no document concludes uh, uh, one time uh, of the findings. So in this study, we took an old map, uh, a 1928 map. Uh, we, overlay, uh, we overlay the alignment uh, with the old map. 100 years ago, uh, what, 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 what were the roads, what were the rivers, what were the name of the towns, uh, what, what, what was there 100 years ago. So, um, and then after that, after our screening, we have um, 
11 sites, uh, some of them listed and some of them unlisted. Uh, so this is what, uh, along these four states, uh, 350 kilometers, there are 11 potential heritage sites that we have identified. So just a quick conclusion. Um, the buffer, uh, as required by the Department of National Heritage, is 200 meters uh, on the, uh, of the, the ROW of the alignment. So we studied uh, 200 meters, but usually it's beyond that. We go by one, up to one kilometer because sometimes the alignment may change. Huh? So we, we eh, sorry. So at the end, the conclusion in Kuala Lumpur, there were three heritage assets. Uh, Selangor, there were also three, and Malacca, two, and Johor, three. So total, we have 11. And then we studied the value. Huh? We assessed the heritage value. Okay, uh, in terms of um, built heritage, huh? we studied the whole alignment. Uh, what are the built heritage along the alignment that we found, we identified. And then we also study the potential archaeology site. Yeah? Uh, and then we also study the natural uh, uh, heritage as, uh, site along the whole alignment. So um, as uh, you can see from this uh, first, first uh, picture on the left here, uh, the value uh, uh, the value that we identify in Bandar Malaysia, KL, we have a, full, a few of this as colored them. So mostly in, in general, a lot of them are actually under uh, the, 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 the significance, the value of the significance is under medium range. Huh? Uh, uh, we follow the, the e-commerce the guideline. Um, they are unlisted property, but they are local, locally listed. They are not World Heritage property or no, they are listed. Uh, by the Department of National Heritage. So those are listed by the Department of National Heritage. It will be on a high significant, uh, sorry, on a high heritage value. So uh, I think uh, assessing value is a very important key uh, uh, when you carry out a uh, heritage impact assessment, when you carry out a CMP. And to understand value, I think just now Richard mentioned a quite a thorough explanation about value. And so uh, the, uh, the, the other speakers as well. Basically, when we talk about heritage, uh, is 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 the value that we are talking about. Uh? Uh, value means what you know the historical value. I think I put a note here: historical value, architectural value, scientific values, aesthetic value, authenticity, and integrity integrity value, and the the list goes on. So this value is very important in heritage that we need to safeguard uh, and to protect it. Okay, uh, of all the 11 uh, uh, significant sites uh, that we identify, uh, I don't think I have time to share all the 11 sites, but I am sharing a few of the sites here. Um, okay, this is site number one. Site number one just now along the alignment, which is uh, the alignment. Okay, you can see the alignment is coming in into Bandar Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. And then along this, this zero one site, which is the control tower, one may look at the control tower and may think, hey, this is such a miserable building. What's the big deal about this building? You know, that's where you, know, you need to come in and assess the value. Sometimes the value, heritage value is not only the building itself. You know? it, 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 it's the historical value. It's the site. Huh? It's, a, it's a setting. It's a surrounding. So for this uh, Kuala Lumpur control tower, it was the first international airport in, Malay in Malaya. It was built that time. Malaysia has not gotten its independence. It was actually a timber structure. So over time, it evolves, huh? it changed. And finally, the last one, it became a, a concrete structure. And, and this, this control tower is very near. Look at this little dot here. It's, so, it's very near to the new proposal, the high-speed rail. And we look at the extent of the high-speed rail, the building and the extent of this development going to be. So, um, and then uh, this, this control tower, uh, at that time when we were, we were preparing the, the, the study, it was in the process of a list, list, uh, being listed uh, by the Department of Heritage. So, okay, I mean, I, I think uh, let's share some little bit history here to make it interesting. Why is so big deal about this, this, this control tower? Well, it has significantly high uh, historical value in terms of Malaysia's independence and the aviation history. It was the first international airport of Malaysia, international airport. Upper right, the picture. This was the arrival of Tonko Abdul Rahman, uh, arrival from, from London. He, he, he was our first prime minister. He had to negotiate with the British uh, uh, government to, to seek independence. So he had went in and out through this airport to negotiate uh, our independence. And then the, 
and then the the upper left uh, picture uh, was the was the first after Malaysia's independence we have our first king, which is uh, Tuanku Sultan Abdul Rahman. This is our first king, and then after we obtain our independence, I think I'm sure a lot of you have seen our Independence uh, Day celebration in the st at Stadium Merdeka. So so Sir so Donald Charles Mac McGillivray, he this guy here, he was the last British commissioner. After our independence, he was being escorted through this airport and here he go back to UK. So that was when our independence, uh, uh, the end of uh, uh, the, the British uh, colony of, of, of um, Mal Mal Malaysia, Malaya, Malaya into Malaysia. So at the bottom, when we celebrate our, celebrated our independence, this airport was a very significant site because you see all these large planes coming from all over the all over countries all over the world. Uh, they were just dignitaries arriving in Sungai Besi Airport. So they were all arriving here. So this is the historical significance of the site. So, so this is some storytelling here. So this is why this site is very important. So, okay, uh, that is the history. So I'm going to go to uh, another site here. Another site, uh, two more assets here, 02 and 03. Remember, we have 11. Uh, so we, I'm sharing here now already three. The 11 is going to pass through here, this site here. This is an old township uh, that buildings are. Uh, uh, shop houses that were built late in 1920s that remain very much intact and they still have blocks and blocks on them uh, 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 in, in the area. And then within it, there's also a little, uh, this post office. Uh, it was built uh, about the same time as well. So this site was actually uh, gazetted by the Kuala Lumpur City Hall. So, so this is not listed by the Department of National Heritage, but it's a, it's, it's a zone, it's a heritage zone uh, gazetted by the local authority. So this is, uh, the alignment is going to pass through and you can see uh, of the old ROW is very close by and you know definitely there's going to be an impact. Eh? And then after that, asset number four, we're going to also pass through a prehistoric archaeology site in Slango State. Eh? Uh, the alignment, here it is. It's actually on, on, on the dot, eh? on the dot of it, you know, the alignment is, is going to go through. So this is a picture where this is going to go through this, uh, 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 the, the whole site is archaeology site, but this is possible the, that was what marked the map, it was mapped. Nah? This, this whole site was, is a sensitive site. So uh, in the past, there were excavation in, in this area here, Jindaram Hillia, where they discovered uh, Neolithic uh, artifacts uh, was discovered in the past uh, on, on, on this site here. Uh, and then there's pos this site uh, possible also found some, some artifacts found, and then here is the possible site. So this is asset number four. And then after that, I skip asset number five. Now I'm going to asset number six. Asset number six is, is, is Kampung Raja, is between Johor and, and, and Malacca along the Moa River. So along this, this, uh, uh, this Kampung Raja area, the alignment is going to go through. Uh, also very, so nearby, uh, let's look at the ROW, it's very nearby. And then actually within the ROW, there is a tomb. Uh, there's a, a 15th century tomb uh, of, of, of the king of the Mal old Malacca king. And then within the site, uh, there was also some cer ceramic shreds uh, found uh, along this Kampung Raja area. So this was, was during our exercise, uh, our HIA study exercise. And this was our site investigation. So when you do HIA studies, believe me, I'm not lying. I traveled 350 kilometers. It took us almost a year to complete this report. It was really tough. The site that we couldn't access, we need drone to fly in uh, uh, so, uh, for those uh, forests as well. Um, but it was uh, a joy and it was challenging. It was really rewarding. And then along this uh, Kampung Raja, like I said just now, it was a 15th century uh, year old tomb, which is a very significant royal tomb uh, because when it's royal tomb, they will write them, the, the inscription will be written in, in, in gold. And then al along that, that area, there are also this very significant, unique uh, a Muslim tomb uh, that has a shape, uh, that it, it looks like a shape of a star food. And the size is like a hand, uh, 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 it's very small, it's just like my hand, uh, the size of my hand. And there was also significant trees, uh, uh, along the cemetery site as well. So this whole site was uh, identified. Uh, it's actually listed under Perzim Johor, uh, but not by the Department of National Heritage. So this is, uh, this is the, some landscape site, uh, and these two tombs are built heritage. 
so so there's a multiple uh, uh, heritage uh, um, sources that we identify so looking back where the site was uh, again the historical study is very important so this was located the site was located along the Sungai Moa area Pago area so this is the significant asset location uh, where the Aceh tombstone uh, was uh, found just now I, the picture that I show you along Moa and Pago river Aceh tombstone is a very significant tombstone in, in the culture of um, Southeast Asia, Malaysia, for the for this uh, the Javanese, and actually it, it originated from Aceh. And some of them, they can be very, very big and tall. Like for example, like, like this one here, this one is about one meter tall. But whereas this one, the royal uh, tombstone, uh, Aceh tombstone is smaller. This is about two feet high. So they all vary in size. Huh? It was told that the warrior that came from Aceh last time when they came into Malaya, before, I mean, they came to the country, they will bring that tombstone with them. So when they died, they will bury on the site and then the tombstone will be there. So that was the, 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 the say, the, how this tombstone believe huh, to be uh, brought into Malaysia. So even we look at the old 1911 map and the, the, the ancient map, the significance of the Moa River during the, uh, the Portuguese, this is the old Portuguese map, the significance of this Moa, Moa River here, this picture. So that place, uh, after the, the, the research of the historical research, then we, I mean, the site, yeah, we identify how significant it was. So historical research is also very important, uh, also part of the study yeah, of a HIA. So, okay, so um, I've gone to assessing significance. I show you some example, what are the sites and, so after that, we, we need to, after that, we identify the heritage value. This, is, this table is from, uh, 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 from the Ecomos 2011 guidance, uh, HIA, for World Heritage Site. Uh, but like I said just now, we will not go to very high. Our value will never go very high because uh, we are not uh, World Heritage Site. We can go from high, medium, low, and negligible. So after that, we, we will identify the value of our asset. Let's say if it's high, and then we, we, we identify the change let's say if, if, if the, the 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 change is moderate and then and then the impact will be between moderate and large so when we assess the impact impact can be a direct impact it can be indirect and consequential and it's not always adverse huh? it can be positive it can be, it can be also benefit a uh, beneficial impact to all as well so uh the, the, the severity of the impact, we, we will refer to, uh, we use this ECOMOS guide. And then after, after we assess the impact, we will propose a mitigation and management and monitoring and reporting. Uh, the assessing of this impact, the change is, is not, uh, it, need, it need a qualified uh, 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 heritage practitioner to evaluate. Uh, it is, it, it's, it it's not say, I'm not saying it's very difficult, nor it's very hard. It, it, it is an assessment, uh, the understanding the assessment uh, uh, of how, how, how much you understand the value of the asset and then the, 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 the actual impact, uh, what will happen. Impact is just not a dot, uh, like what I show you the pictures of one blocking. You know, it, it can be consequential, con consequential. It can lead to further... Uh, uh, future impact that we would not know. Uh, uh, for example, like World Heritage Site, let's say if you don't control tourism, then it will change the setting. Uh. So this is an impact. Uh, this is what we call it a consequential impact. It's, it, it will happen after that. Um, so, okay, I'm just going to show an example uh, how we assess the impact for this control tower. So what we did what was... Um, Okay, this was the control tower just now that the picture that I show you earlier slide. Remember, this was uh, asset, asset number one. So this whole development, uh, this, this high-speed railway uh, will arrive here next to it uh, within 100 meters. And the size of the development of this, this high-speed rail station is just huge. It's just giant. And then if you look at this, uh, sorry. If you look at the scale of this, this picture here, the, 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 so we have to stimulate, we, we have to simulate uh, the drawings. So we, we need uh, architects, we need engineers to study. So like I said, HI is not a one-man thing, uh, a study. So you, you compare to the control tower, look at the scale of this, this 
building here and then the scale of this future development is going to be. So again, uh, like just now, um, when we assess the significant, it was very, it, it was it was medium uh, because it was not listed yet by the Department of National Heritage. It was in the process of of uh, of, of uh, listing, and then the magnitude of impact is moderate. Uh. So when you look at this, you can see uh, that the change uh, of the setting of the historic uh, of the historic site, and then we are going to have visual in, impact, consequential impact, and we are going to have noise and vibration impact during construction and even during operation. And, and this control tower, the size of the virtue of the size of this building, it, 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 it will just sink. Huh? It will sink this, this old heritage building and the site as well. It's like it, it will be just, you know, brushed under the carpet. You can't even see, you know, looking at the scale of the, of, of the, of the project. Uh, so, so this is um, what uh, uh, the heritage impact assessment example, uh, how, what happened for this zero one. And then besides uh, uh, visual direct impact, indirect impact, uh, noise vibration, uh, we also abstract, uh, we, we also uh, get the information from the EIA uh, report as well, uh, because noise vibration will also affect our heritage building. Uh, especially, okay, noise, it will impact the people, let's say, what people are working inside the heritage building. Even during construction, you will have this noise impact. And even during operation, you will still hear the sound. Uh, 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 so you will have this noise. And then during construction, you will have a vibration impact. So let's say if a heritage building that's 200 years old, the building is not built on PAL. Uh, they will have very vulnerable footing, some of them brick, some of them stone. So with this big scale of development, excavation five floors before ground uh, below ground it will definitely impact the heritage building so there will uh, also a, a extent of uh, environmental impact huh, that we have to look into it as well when we do the hia because it will have it will this 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 construction uh, the noise vibration it will have a direct huh, it will have a direct physical impact to the heritage because it 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 it, it will cause damage so it's a direct physical impact so um we also, also sorry all oh, the typo here. so so this is another example uh, this is not uh, uh the, the high speed radio was taken for another site so they, they we also predict uh, we do a noise level we do a prediction and then after mitigation what do we get now uh, the, the decibel see how much can we maintain the decibel uh before and after that after so this is example of our previous for another study okay so traffic we also look at traffic as well huh? uh, traffic is so very important um it, it, during construction especially if they say cause up a, a massive traffic jam cement truck coming in uh, uh, construction uh, machineries that will also have uh, the heritage building will also have potential impact as well uh, um it, accident can happen um uh, People in, in, in the meditation bag also be impacted by that. So, okay, go to this meeting. Um, also coming to my to the end here, a few more slides here. Okay, general uh, example. This is an example of general mitigation. Can you hear me? My internet is unstable. Sorry. Okay, general mitigation. Okay, we identify first of all, we identify the impact, uh, the magnitude and the change, and then whether the impact is going to cause the total loss of the authenticity and integrity of the heritage. It changes the setting or whether this impact, is it reversible or non-reversible and the consequential impact. So um, this is a, the type of impact we need to identify. And then for like archaeological site, for example, let's say if the alignment is going to go on the known archaeological site, well, well, that's it, you know, um, sorry, the development the alignment will have to be relocated. And even, even natural site, we have cases where project where the, where the development was going to call through huh? a, a natural site. Yeah? Uh, no, huh? uh, the, 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 the alignment will have to change. Huh? So anyway, for potential archaeological site, uh, we, we can start by doing a, a, a geophysical survey, a soil investigation, a trial trench survey, and then archaeologists is very important. They need to be at the site during uh, 
all the deep excavation. And then if they say during construction and they need the excavation, they found something, then too bad. You know, the, the, the alignment will have to relocate. So we have experienced a few cases of this as well. And then for built heritage uh, site as well, uh, listed and also potential built heritage site, uh, uh, let's say if it's listed and the alignment coming right to your doorway, you will also have to relocate. Huh? Uh, and then uh, let's say if the the HIA is uh, uh, the, the 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 HIA is carried out earlier, uh, the coordination with the designer uh, uh, can can interface because design of a, a, a railway station, especially the viaduct and the and, and the call the pier are quite standard, but the railway station like what I show you just now is like huge. Huh? And then this design will, we, we also have to look at the design because like I said, you know, we do not, uh, the conservation principle, uh, whether the, it's either A or B, uh, whether your design, your, whatever your design is going to be, is in, it's going to be in harmony or you are going to be totally extreme, uh, it's either or. So the design, we have to comment. And then the protection of the site during construction, you have to protect the site. And documentation, documentation is a very, very important tool uh, because, um, uh, we have to do a dilapidation survey. We have to do uh, a build drawing. Let's say the site doesn't have what happened like during construction. You know, since Kuala Lumpur, we have a lot of this. Uh, it was an X line majority of this, the of, of the geology, the uh, aspect of it. There are a lot of limestone. You know, there may, may maybe sinkhole. Maybe one excavation, the whole building may just sink. You know, we may just lose it. You know, now documentation is very important. So you need to do a build. And then uh, for the alignment, the HIA study, uh, when the, the alignment, let's say, is going to pass through a significant site, then we need to do a, another HIA, which is a localized. And then we also have a monitoring during construction. We have to report back to the Department of National Heritage. And then also the, the opportunity of conservation as well. And then also, uh, hey, sorry, I repeated my monitoring text twice. Actually, it's only one. So it's the same. It's the same for those uh, uh, unpotential site, I mean, uh, unlisted site. But however, the fate of unlisted site at certain times uh, with, uh, with, with uh, I don't know what word I should say. Uh, a certain time, we cannot protect them. Huh? Uh, political uh, issue, uh, uh, because under the law, uh, only those protected site, uh, where the, 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 the National Heritage uh, Act uh, can govern them. But those unprotected sites, not listed by the local authority nor the Department of Natural Heritage, sometimes we, we lost quite a lot of them. So if they had to be demolished, what are we going to do? So we still have to document them. So at least we have a full set of documents. Okay, 100 years ago, this building for so-and-so, how does it look like, you know? Uh, uh, maybe one day there may be opportunity to replica and rebuild. So example of this um, uh, archaeology uh, impact, uh, we did a, a trial trench uh, before. Uh, I do not know why my picture is missing. I have no idea. But anyway, this was this example, a uh, mitigation for archaeological site. Uh, uh, let's say we be during our trial trench, we, we found something. Sorry, the alignment will have to change. And then... Oh, sorry, there's a picture here. Okay, got it. So this is the full picture. <laughs> so this is an example that we had another one of the alignment that is passing the site of a, a archeological site. So after that, we opened up the few trenches and then we found out there was no significant structure and then the project can, can go on. So, so this whole HIA study, it takes from, it, can, it will take a few phases. Huh? First of all, we carry out the study and after that, okay, and then, then before construction, we will have another stage. And then during construction, the, the conservator or the archaeologist will have to come in another monitoring. So, so in Malaysia, the practice is, is quite detailed. Uh, uh, it's very comprehensive uh, to date. So another, this was uh, another site just now. I told you, uh, uh, Sungai Besi, the old town, uh, the alignment was coming very close. So we also need to do a heritage um, documentation. We need to study the carry out the inventories, and we do uh, a visual uh, a DLAP survey. So uh, we identify those the state of conservation for all these available shop houses uh, that is on the site. So this is a, a sample of the of the of the mitigation 
uh, part of mitigation that we carry out documentation. So, okay, like I said, for those sites that is unprotected, uh, they are under threat, they will be demolished like this one. Uh, this is another, not high-speed rail project, but another project that we cannot uh, save it. Um, this was a site for old doctors uh, uh, during um, a, a site when, when Kuala Lumpur Hospital uh, first set up. Uh, these are early housing uh, for the doctors. So, so what we do is that in, 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 in our report, we also discuss the principle of conservation as well. Okay, like you want you demolish this building, this roof tiles, you know, we can salvage them. Uh, uh, we can reuse them. Uh, in Kuala Lumpur, this Masay old tiles today is selling for five ringgit, about $1.50 US dollar a piece uh, for the old ones. Uh. I'm not sure in Bangkok or in, in, in other parts of uh, Laos or Cambodia, uh, uh, whether anybody uh, is keeping all this Masay tiles. But in Malaysia, yeah, they are keeping it uh, reused. So, and then we... Yeah, we do documentation, the significant uh, 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 elements, for example, this steel, how they, they, they used to connect the roof truss. Yeah? And then uh, the, the floor, the floor slab, uh, at that time it was built with brick. You know? um, so these are all the bolts and nuts connecting, and this is a very interesting window uh, design. And then we picked up uh, all the flooring uh, by, 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 by different layers and different time. Uh, so we know that this black and white, I think, is the same in, in Indochina. Uh, these are the earlier version. So this one is also an example of the documentation. I'm coming to the end here. So this is another example. Uh, uh, the, the, the panel, the timber panel. So another example that we picked up. So, okay, here's my conclusion. Just like to read off my slide here. HIA shall be conducted by a team of comp competent professionals and others and to be led by a heritage practitioner. HIA is more effective during the early planning stage of project. HIA is unique pending the type of the development and the nature of the heritage site. And the HIA report shall be an independent document. No input from left and right, but I know this is a very, this can be very challenging uh, depending on the nature of the project. Uh, okay, uh, this is my last slide. I'd like to thank everyone for listening to me here. Um, and um, let me end up with this quote that are uh, written by myself. Uh, the legacies of the past is the memory of now and the present of the future. Safeguard our heritage. Thank you.